Let's take a step back for a moment and look a little closer at effects in Reason. I have a simple subtractor patch here that we'll use to talk about effects. Now to start with, when we select a device and then add an effect, the auto routing that Reason does is to send the output of that device to the effect and the effect back to the mixer. Of course, we can always hold down Shift to override that, or we can drag the cables ourselves. Now, if we look at the front of all effects, you'll see a three-way switch. When it's on, we hear the effect and bypass disables it. When it's off, it means the signal flow is effectively stopped, so nothing gets through, so we don't hear anything. Now notice the meter on the front of the effect. Every effect has a meter, and it's a good way of monitoring your signal to make sure that you're not getting into the spiking area or the red area. And if it does, you're going to get your digital distortion. So you want to make sure that you lower your input into the effect so that that doesn't happen. Let's flip to the back of the rack. You may have noticed these domino-like symbols that are to the left of every effect. They describe the signal flow, how the effect handles mono and stereo signals. If I pull up a second effect, let's say a scream distortion, you'll notice a different set of symbols. So what do these symbols actually mean? Well, this means that the input can come in mono and go out mono. This means the signal can come in mono and be split to stereo. This means that if it comes in stereo, each channel is processed independently of the other one. This symbol means that the left and right input are combined or summed and then that summed input is processed by the effect and sent out to both the left and right outputs of the effect. And the last symbol, which you will only find on the RV7000 Advanced Reverb, means that there is true stereo processing. So stereo comes in, each channel uses the signal information from both the inputs, but the inputs aren't summed together, the two channels are processed differently and sent out. Now, like we saw with instruments, effects have knobs on the back which determine how much an incoming signal will influence a specific parameter. So, for example, if I have something coming into the rate parameter or the frequency parameter to my phaser, the knob will determine how much the input will affect the rate or the frequency. So, let's show a quick example of that. I'll add a matrix. and we will draw in a curve. Now remember, the default of a matrix is to control note and gate information, but we don't want to do that. What we want to do is use the curve information we drew in to control something in our effect, and we'll use it to control the rate. Now I need to play my subtractor, and then we will hear the matrix at work. When I lower the rate knob, there's not a lot of influence from the matrix to the rate parameter. Let's really make it dramatic. All the way up, and then back all the way down. So we hear a little change, but not a tremendous amount. But if we crank that rate knob up on our phaser, now we're going to hear a lot of change. And the same thing will happen if we route to frequency. So you can do an awful lot by adjusting knobs next to ports, both on instruments and effects.
And with that, let's start looking at the effects in more detail. 